Hello everyone, uh, my name is Brant Swidler. I'm a senior technical product manager here at AWS and I'll be joined by Alberto Gascon, the head of AI from SEPSA. We'll be going through uh, detecting abnormal equipment behavior by analyzing sensor data. Uh, my personal background is in the oil and gas sector, so I definitely have learned a lot about the cost of lost production time and the effort in reducing downtime. And it's great to be joined by Alberto and his team or have been working with Alberto and his team um, from SEPSA, as I've worked with SEPSA a number of years ago from my time as an engineer in Hasi Massoud, Algeria. It's definitely no secret in across industrials that unplanned equipment downtime can be costly. And depending on the types of reports that you look at, um, there's a, a big numbers in the, in the availability of savings that can occur. So 82% of companies have experienced some level of unplanned downtime over the past three years. 70% aren't really fully aware of when their equipment is due for maintenance, upgrade, or replacement. And what that equates to is very big dollar value amounts of savings available for industrial companies. McKinsey estimates that it's $630 billion. However you look at cutting this, uh, this application or this, this, uh, this issue, uh, there's a lot of savings available uh, for companies that want to reduce downtime. Because of this, for high value applications, investments have been rolling into equipment health monitoring, whether that's sensors to measure and capture data, data storage in order to be able to store and trend all of that information, connectivity, whether that's to the cloud or in, in inside of a plant, and then analytics in order to derive insights from this, from this data that's being measured, and visualizations in order to give tools and methods to uh, field technicians to be able to take action. But this level of investment has not yet fully translated into better productivity, as this is because companies are generally drowning in data and have not yet figured out how to get all of the value out of this. So they've invested a lot in sensors and data capture, but have not really been able to get at all of the data that's, or get insights from all of the data that's being measured. In fact, it's estimated that less than 5% of all of this measured data from industrial equipment is actually being used. And when we look at the certain gaps of why this is the case, we heavily focus in on this analytics piece. So current analytics methods that companies are using definitely have their limitations. Um, if we start off with the most simplistic, uh, we look at single variable analysis. This is really looking at one measurement, let's say temperature is an example, and looking at thresholds above or below a certain temperature value, maybe some statistics or trend on one value. But this is a simple generic approach, meaning that it's applied once across many different types of equipment. Um, it's limited in its accuracy because you're really hoping that that one value can give you insights into how, how your equipment is operating. And you also end up with lots of alarms. So if you can imagine having not just one, but dozens, if not hundreds of different sensors measuring different values, all having different thresholds, they're all going to spit off alarms fairly frequently. Thus, we start to look at more complicated or more complex ways to actually solve for equipment health monitoring. And the next step uh, is physics-based modeling. So with physics-based modeling, engineers tend to look at uh, build an actual equation of how, the, how you expect a piece of equipment to operate. You know, pressure times temperature equals you know, failure or something. And these types of approaches um, are really complex, uh, but they're also generic models. So if I build a model for a jet engine, I then try to apply that model across all possible jet engines. It's also static, so I build, a mo I build that physics-based model once, and it doesn't really adjust over the time or life cycle of that specific asset. And it's time-consuming and can be expensive to build. So then the next step that a lot of companies start to looking, looking at in terms of machine learning is more supervised applications of machine learning. And these supervised methods are really the promise of, you know, quote-unquote, predictive maintenance where you would expect to be able to say, okay, given a bunch of failures and given my historical data, I can now predict with some level of probability the number of days before a specific failure is going to happen. So the expectation is that I'm now gonna be able to say, you know, with 80% certainty in 30 days, your equipment's going to fail. However, uh, this is not normally the case uh, these types of applications are also complex because they require lots of ground truth examples of failure. 
Uh, you need multiple equipment data sets to be merged into one type of application. And you need many examples of failures in order to um, be able to get at this information. And it requires a lot of technical expertise. So across these three main approaches that currently are being applied, as the complexity increases between single variable physics-based or supervised machine learning approaches, the amount of time and effort and money required to put these into practice keeps growing. And as we've spoken to a number of companies across, um, a number of customers across AWS, um, because of the complexity here, we, we consistently hear that the climb is not necessarily always worth the view. And there's a good reason for why this is the case. Because in reality, uh, the industrial space is very challenging. And the industrial space is challenging because every asset is essentially a unique, uh, is a, is a unique data set. So every piece of equipment that's operating is operating in a different environment. There's different ages, models, manufacturers. Uh, everyone has different numbers and types of sensors or tags on a specific asset. Uh, maintenance history is different from asset one to asset two. And they often change over their, over their life cycle. So even if you had two, let's say, compressors next to each other, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the same model could be applied to both. So every asset is unique. Downtimes are also rare events. So failures are rare events. Uh, labeled failures can be subjective, uh, meaning that there's a lot of times in which the person who actually labeled a specific failure might have a, a different interpretation of what that actually means. Not all failures are predictable events. Um, one asset or one piece of equipment can have many different failure modes, and some failures have no symptoms at all. So what this essentially means is that the previous approaches of supervised applications of machine learning are, are really difficult here because you don't have a lot of examples of failure. And then lastly, it's very difficult to implement some of these solutions. You not only need machine learning expertise, you also need technical knowledge on the equipment, you need software engineering expertise, and you need to do a lot of model management and build for sustainability of a model over time and scale. So this industrial space is very challenging. Every asset is unique. Downtimes are rare, and this is difficult to implement. So what, what the space needs is really a solution that can do a number of things. We need a solution that can customize uh, to the number of sensors, the unique data set, and operating conditions of each piece of equipment that's operating in the field. We need a solution that does not require the luxury of having many labeled examples of failure and can be adjusted over the asset's lifespan. We also need a solution that can be scaled across a number of assets and asset types and can be used without having deep machine learning expertise. So with that, uh, as a PM here, I'm really excited to announce, uh, introduce Amazon Lookout for Equipment. This is an automated machine learning service that uses your historical sensor data to detect abnormal equipment behavior. This, this service is built specifically for industrial companies that have already invested in this equipment monitoring space. And it uses your existing sensor data um, and maintenance logs. You might hear me say sensor data. I'll also refer to this as, it's a synonym for what I use as tags. Um, and maintenance logs as well. So we'll be able to use the existing data that has already been generated from your equipment, as well as the maintenance logs that you've been recording over for the assets running lifespan. And we'll use this information to build a custom model per asset, meaning that the model is custom built to the specific piece of equipment that the data is being generated on. And it's also equipment and data type agnostic. We're using your historical data um, this means that we're leveraging whatever sensors that you already have or whatever data that you're already measuring, measuring from your critical equipment. And then once you've built a model, this model can be, can be used for continuous detection of equipment behavior. So we can now put this model into a continuous, a continuous monitoring of your equipment. And then to build your model, this does not require any machine learning expertise. So this is Amazon Lookout for Equipment, and I guess the next question is, how does this really work? So Amazon uh, Lookout for Equipment reads directly from S3. Uh, basically, you have your historical data in you know, uh, some database already, um, as well as your maintenance records. And as we bring all of those into an S3 bucket, then the Amazon Lookout for Equipment will read directly from your S3 bucket in three major steps. So the first is an ingestion step, which will read directly from S3. 
Then through an automated through an automated workflow, you can select the sensors that you want to use or the inputs you want to use for a specific model. And just giving us the right information will run through the automated machine learning approach to build the model that learns the normal behavior of your specific asset. And then once you've built your model, uh, we can put this into a real time or continuous, uh, continuous monitoring setup. So what's the methodology running here? So the first step, we ingest your data of up to 300 time series inputs in, uh, from one uh, coming from one uh, from one asset. Uh, these could be sensors, actuators, you know, just generalized tags. 300 up to 300 in one model. Then we will also take in your historical failure information. So giving us the failure co the failure information from your historical maintenance logs, we'll be able to use that in our model development process. And then uh, Amazon Lookout for Equipment will use these two inputs, both the historical sensors and the maintenance logs, in order to learn the, beha the normal behavior or the normal conditions of how an asset operates when it's operating under a healthy state. And then as we put this into a real-time application, we'll be able to run real-time data through this model to detect any sort of abnormal behavior. So just a very quick, simple example. This is a very simple pump uh, with just two sensors on it. You can see RPMs and flow rate. And RPMs is basically how fast uh, the pump is spinning, and flow rate is how fast uh, any fluid is exiting the pump. And you would expect these to have a very direct relationship to each other. Again, this is a simple example. So if we were to just simply plot RPMs and flow rate, you would expect to see um, our, you know, at the times where the pump is running at low speed, you would expect a low flow rate. And this is visualized in this circle in the bottom left on this chart. RPMs are the y-axis, flow rate is the x-axis. As you increase the pump speed, you can see that the new data points that start to arrive are in this grouping at the very top right, which is high RPMs and high flow rate. So this would be defined as the normal behavior of this specific pump. Again, this is a very simple example just with two dimensions, but you would expect to see a, a, a pattern of data around uh, low, low RPMs, low flow rate, and a pattern of data around high RPMs and high flow rate. As uh, part of this pump starts to fail for one reason or another, uh, you'll, you might end up seeing a pattern in which as you increase the RPMs, you are no longer seeing the same amount of flow rate. So the flow rate is still changing in this low flow rate state, even though, um, even though you're increasing the speed of the pump. And this could be for a number of reasons, maybe the impeller is loose or some, some other problems like cavitation or something else. And this is what we would be detecting as abnormal equipment behavior. So all of those red dots that are climbing, we are now looking at that as an abnormality in the behavior of the specific pump. We learned the normal behavior of the low RPM, low flow rate, and the high RPM, high flow rate. And as, um, as the equipment starts to fail, we start to see this pattern of behavior that's no longer um, inside of any of those known conditions. Now, I, I mentioned this before, but this is a very simple example. As we start to look at building more complexity around this, you can think about having more than just two sensors. You can have um, up to 300 sensors or 300 inputs into one specific model. And as you start to make that more complex, you can not only look at the across the sensors, but you're also looking across time as well. So the complexity of the problem starts to increase, and this is really where the value of machine learning comes into place, where you have a very high dimensional problem that um, one person cannot sift through up to 300 inputs into one specific uh, into one specific asset. So what is happening under the hood here? So in order to solve this problem, there are many, many steps that need to go into a typical data science workflow. Starting all the way on the left-hand side, we're inputting data ingested um, from, the, from the historical data, but then you have to do data cleaning steps. I mean, simple things like uh, you know, timestamp alignment, imputation. As you get more into the machine learning aspects, you have algorithmic selection, hyperparameter selection, optimizing threshold identification, figuring out how to set up a training and test or validation split for time series modeling, um, integrating the historical failures into, um, into your modeling approaches, selecting the optimal model, feature rankings, and then evaluating the actual output. 
there's a lot of steps. And even inside of each one of these buckets, there's probably a dozen or two dozen additional decisions that someone would need to make in order to solve this problem. So with this, with Amazon Lookout for Equipment, we've automated all of those steps in the middle to now where all you need to do is bring your ingested historical data and go to and evaluate the output data. And all of the machine learning or all of these data science decisions that we originally had to make are now hidden and completely under the hood so you can just go through the model training process. So I'm quickly going to go through an example from an industrial pump. The industrial pump has five main components on it, an impeller, a motor, a housing, a volume, and a shaft, each that have six sensors on them. The data set is from January to November of 2019, and it has 30 sensors across the five components, each measuring data at a one uh, once per minute, and there are 10 failure events over the 11th month time frame. A sample of the data set from the motor, you see that the first column is the timestamp and every other sensor is every other column uh, in this data set. For labels, we consume labels as time ranges. So these are windows of time in which we expect abnormal behavior to occur. Jumping over to the console, I can see that I've now accessed my S3 bucket, which has my impeller, my motor, my pump main housing, the shaft, and the volute. So I'm just going to let Amazon Lookout for Equipment know that this is the data that I want by selecting the at the pump level. So now I'm going to ingest all of those folders at once uh, using, um, using the console here. Now, I've already done this, so I'm going to go back to the data set and, and create a new model. We'll call this pump model one. And at this point, once all of the data is ingested, as you can see, I can select any component or sub sensor that I sub component that I want to use to model this, this specific pump. So if I just wanted to model the motor, I could just select the sensors on the motor. In this case, I'm going to select all of the sensors on this specific pump. And once I've selected all of the sensors, my next step is to let Amazon Lookout for Equipment know where my label file should be. So I jump back into S3 and my label file is here inside of my S3, uh, inside of this S3 folder. So I can just choose this now. Now that I've selected the sensors that I want to use and I've let uh, Amazon Lookout for Equipment know where the labels are, I can now set my training time range and my evaluation time range. So I've now set my training time range and my evaluation time range. Um, the Amazon Lookout for Equipment will use the January to September time range to learn, uh, use that data to learn the normal behavior of the asset, and then use the remaining uh, September to the late October time range to evaluate the performance of, uh, of, the, of the model on unseen data. I can last, the last step that I'm going to do is downsample my data set. Um, the original sample rate was once per minute. Now I can just select once per five minutes. Now, once I click create, this will kick off the training set, the, the training time, which will then go through all of the possible permutations and combinations of algorithms and hyperparameters that will um, best approximate the normal behavior of the pump. I've already done this, so I'm going to jump directly back into um, one of the models that we've already built. So we'll just go to uh, the pump 11 model. And you can see that this pump 11 model is ready for inferencing. It took 56 minutes to train. And um, when we look at the performance, you can see over January to September is the training range. September to October is the test range. And it was downsampled to every five minutes. We saw five abnormal behavior events inside of the six labels that we gave, uh, that we gave Amazon Lookout for Equipment. And the abnormal behavior events occurred on average 23 hours and 10 minutes before the actual failure event occurred. There were also some false positives. So we saw six abnormal equipment behavior events um, outside of the label ranges uh, with an average duration of nine minutes. And this is also encompassed in this visualization where the gray boxes are the label ranges of uh, input by a user and the blue boxes are the detection output from the model. Now that I've viewed my model and I go, great, this is a good model. I want to put this into uh, real-time inferencing. I can scroll up and just go to schedule inference. Now the scheduled inference setup is meant to be to really easily set up um, for real-time inferencing. So what this allows you to do is set the bucket location at which new data will arrive. So as all of the sensors on my pump wake up, deposit data in either some on-premise system or maybe direct to S3, um, at this point, I can just let the uh, Amazon Lookout for Equipment know where I expect new data to arrive. So I'll just choose that bucket. 
And then I can just set the frequency, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour. And at 5 minutes, what will happen is Amazon Lookout for Equipment will wake up, go grab any new data that's arrived in S3, run it through the model, and output the results back into another S3 bucket. So now I'll just set the output uh, S3 location at which I expect data to arrive. And once I schedule my inference, what this means is that we've now ingested data into Amazon Lookout for equipment. We've built a, a custom model based on this specific pump. We've then taken that model and we're now set up to run continuous inferencing of new data being generated from that model um, in, until we stop it. Great. So now uh, we're going to jump into an example uh, from, or you know, the workflow with Sepsa. So I'm going to hand off, uh, hand it off to Alberto to go through, um, you know, some of Sepsa's work, uh, some of their problem statements, and then how we work together um, to help develop this service. Thanks, Brand. So I'm Alberto. I'm head of AI at Sepsa. Uh, Sepsa is an energy company that is present across the five continents and across the whole value chain of energy production and distribution. Around two or three years ago, we decided that it was critical for us to move all our data to the cloud and to make it accessible for our, all of our employees. We believe this was kind of a bold decision, maybe bolder than some of our peers, because we believe that uh, comparing to some of uh, our peers, we think that we already have all this data. And because of that, we have been able already to create a lot of value at scale at Thepsa. Mainly, we have been able to build capabilities across the whole company, and for that we've created a company digital experience where we show our employees how to get the theory and get the practice on building their own things on digital. Now, we've also created many products based on AWS, uh, both for our internal use, and some of them also we are launching them for external clients. Um, so equipment monitoring is a typical use case on, on, the, on our sector. Um, and in my personal opinion, it's not really a use case that is fully solved. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that there's a lot of data. I'm providing you in the slide here some of our metrics on the data to be analyzed. And that's a lot of data. Um, and we don't think that there's still a perfect solution that's taking the whole market because maybe Supervised learning doesn't work very well on this kind of approach. And we see that also anomaly detection sometimes provides too many alarms. It doesn't give credibility to our material experts. And, and so we were still looking for the perfect solution. Um, we also tried out our own algorithms and we would be able to improve them. But even if they were perfect, we would still have the problem to make them scalable uh, for all of our equipments. Um, and finally, we needed that to democratize ML across the whole company so that our subject matter experts were able to both use, create, and understand uh, ML models. And we would need to make this accessible for everyone. So being in that situation, we started working with AWS, with Brand and the team. And we were very grateful to be able to test this beta version of, of Amazon Lookdown for Equipment. And how was our experience? Well, we started with a kind of complex equipment. We started with a Turbo Expander with more than 175 tags. And what we provided is access to the values of these tags and a log of the maintenance. And we didn't provide anything else. And what did we get back? We got back um, anomaly detection and, and we were able to see some clear pattern 45 days be before the big event that we had on our plant. And we were also able to understand what were the features most important. So our SMEs saw these, these results and saw the feature importance. And overall, we think it, Amazon Lookdown for Equipment is quite a promising solution. And we're very looking forward to continue exploring it with Brand and the team. Great. Thanks, Alberto. Um, it's been great working with you guys as well. Uh, what I want to go into next is just how uh, how Amazon Lookout for Equipment fits into the current ecosystem. As we mentioned in the earlier slides, you know, there's uh, a lot of companies have been investing in you know, sensors and data storage and visualization tools already. So if we look at the current ecosystem of how, uh, just as a generalized view, 
but you have data storage, uh, some historical data, as well as coming from SCADA systems or real-time data, um, and then going into another database, which would be S3, and then outputting results into existing visualizations or alarming software that already exi exists um, in the space. Amazon Lookout for Equipment is meant to read directly to and from S3. So we build our initial model reading from the historical data deposited in S3. And as new real-time data shows up into S3 buckets, we're able to then uh, read that information, run inferencing, get results on that data, and output it back into S3, where existing solutions could already be used for visualizations, alarm setting, uh, scheduling or any other workflow changes that need to occur uh, from from monitoring all of this equipment or the output from from Amazon Lookout for equipment. So uh, as a solution, uh, three things to keep in mind. This is built for industrial equipment. It's mostly focusing right now on continuous operating equipment. So uh, you know process uh, process industries. Um, it's asset agnostic. So this can work across a number of different types of assets, regardless of um, you know regardless of the specific type. And this is a completely automated workflow. And so that means that it's built for to scale quickly and effectively across um, across different applications. Just some additional customers and, and partners that we'd like to thank along the way um, that have, have been instrumental in helping us build across. Um, you know, GS EPS as a power generation company in out of Korea, uh, they've been you know super helpful in 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 working with us on on helping to build a, a service here, and we hope to see a lot of value work, working with them in the future. In addition, uh, Doosan, uh, Doosan Infracore, uh, working with Doosan over the past number of months, um, they're ex ex you know they've said that they're excited to continue to work with AWS to leverage. Um, Amazon Lookout for further equipment analytics in the next in their next gen IoT platform. Um, we've also been working closely with our partners such as GE Digital. Uh, you know, GE has been instrumental in helping us uh, work together to define some of the some of the components here. Um, as well as I'd also like to mention, you know, working with OSI Soft for companies that already have um, you know OPI databases as well. So if you'd like to find out more about any of these services or Amazon Lookout for equipment specifically, uh, you can find more information at aws.amazon.com, Lookout for Equipment, as well as our developer guide. So thanks everyone for listening and please feel free to find any other additional information that you'd like. Um, and thank you. <laughs>